so there's not a whole whole bunch to unpack with this episode other than the fact that um nobody trusts sweet tea i guess nobody really wants diabetes huh Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine. This is season 10, episode two. And like I said, child folks are saying, uh-uh, I don't want no diabetes, child. Nobody's really feeling this here, sweet tea. Like they like her. You know, there's folks that like her, especially the ones that don't, like Toya, you know, people who really don't care for Quad. Are, but of course we like you, of course, you know. Simone's cool. They, they're being cool, but everybody really got their ears open to and their eyes open to what is really going down as pertains to sweet tea. And sweet tea is coming across as a gold digger. Sweet tea is coming across like she got something for Dr. Gregory. Now, and look, I'm looking at sweet tea. Girl, let's talk about it. So first things first, Heavenly, you are a clown. You are a clown. <laughs> Child, you got to love Dr. Heavenly. Listen, Dr. Heavenly, when they, you know how they do their little clips when they're first coming in. Why is this fool over there taking some type of yoga class or something and the damn wig that fell off? When that wig rolled off her head and hit that floor, I said, only. I don't even think anybody, there, there's one other person from this cast that would actually pull that stunt and laugh it off. And that is Simone. Because Simone is another one who's so silly that she would be able to laugh at herself. I fell out so bad. I said, you are so silly. So silly. Wig just fell right on off onto the floor. She had her little to the back braids. I said, Dr. Heavenly, you are a mess. You are a mess. It's a good mess, but you a mess. <laughs> so I laughed at that real good. I said, Dr. Heavenly, something else. So that was the first thing. And I'm like, good, we needed something uh, to, to, to brighten things up because whew, first thing, we go over to Phaedra's house. And who's at the door? Miss Quad, Miss Quad, she got it. And what does she have? She had on some outfit that I was not here for at all. I don't know what this was. Listen, y'all know Quad's my girl. Y'all know she stay clean. I don't know what was going on with this outfit, but I couldn't stay. I didn't like it at all. It was so off brand for her. I was like, what is this shit? It's like some shorts with some hearts cut out of it with some rhinestones and then this little brawly thing going on with some rhinestones and it was giving me a a whole madonna vogue moment which we all know that the madonna vogue moment is really like the knockoff vogue moment i, I just that outfit was an absolute no for me. I don't know what my girl was going through with that one, but that one was a complete no. I, it's the first thing to come by. Hair good, makeup good, naturally, as always. But that outfit, I said, oh, where are you going? And then Phaedra, let me just say this now. When I say Phaedra's coming through here smashing the fashions, Phaedra, you need your ass whooped. You need your ass whooped. Just the, the fashions that Phaedra has come through with in the first two episodes, nasty. Phaedra is giving y'all fashion, okay? Fashion. I said, okay, Quad, come on and do what it is that you do. Don't you pull another one of these two-piece ensembles, honey, because that was giving me swap meat, and that ain't you, babe. That ain't you at all. I, I mm -mm. Throw that whole shit in the garbage. Okay, so moving past that, we start talking about dating. Are you dating? 
are you dating Miss Quad? Are you dating? Yes. She he's an African, um, I believe. And they showed a picture and said, nice look a man. I said, okay, that, that work. All that works. All the optics of it was the, it all worked. And they said, what's his name? I have to say, gentlemen. That part. She's not married to medicine, my dear. So you don't need to be all up in her gentleman's caller's business. His name is gentleman, period. And then speaking of eye candy, who the hell is Benji? Benji. And here come Benji down the steps. I said, so wait a minute, Phaedra. <laughs> Listen, you know, Phaedra believe in being surrounded by eye candy. Okay, here goes ex-husband Apollo. Okay, so now we got Benji. Benji come tipping on down the steps. And I said, so what, what do you do all day, Benji? You just look good and go get Phaedra something to drink? Yeah, sure, I believe that. Benji was cute. But I said, okay, little eye candy. So Phaedra's bringing you the fashion and the eye candy this season. Thank you, Phaedra. I ain't complaining. I'm just here. I'm just doing my job. I just noticed Benji. Hey, Benji. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we touch right on to the DUI situation. And Quad, she didn't jump from it. She didn't run from it. She came straight on out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it was thrown out. Okay, so it existed. It was what it was. Toya wasn't lying. She wasn't lying. But then Quad went into, well, this is why she wanted to tell it because, you know, whatever I do, she's always going to have a problem because she can't stand me. It is what it is. It's fair. Same as what you do with her. Y'all got a, a mutual beef going on. It's, it's total beef. So that's fine. That's fine. And, and she, everybody understands where everybody is. And that's that. Now, what I did get is that Phaedra is basically calling Quad out on her, her stuff. You know what I mean? Like she's saying, you know, about I haven't heard from anybody, but when it comes to like heavenly and that, I haven't heard from anybody, this, that thing, and the other. And Phaedra's like, no, Miss Quad girl, phones actually dial out and they actually receive incoming calls. So that's on both sides. So yeah, Phaedra will be good. And then Quad ain't combative with, with Phaedra. So Phaedra will be good if everything stays like it is. Because she ain't taking no sides. She basically is just listening. She's lending a listening ear, which is what people should do. When you're friends, you don't have to be caught in the middle. You be caught in the middle because your raggedy ass wants to be caught in the middle. You can listen and shut up. Because just like ears, like the phone do, ears listen and they also close. You hear it? Just because you heard something don't make your mouth open. Shut up. You can hear it and don't hear it all at one time. Trust me. Anyway, so that was that. Um, then there was an old thing where she said about heavily being out with sweet tea. I'm like, my quad. Now, see, all of this is kind of new and different because, again, when we left off, Quad was okay with sweet tea and 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 Dr. G and all that. So now we're seeing, no, she's not really all that cool with it. And seeing her friends, her Judy's hanging out with sweet tea, don't sit real well with her. That's a quadism. Okay. So that's for quad to deal with. That's not, you know, that's an issue. Because people do what they want to do. People can be friends with whoever they want to be friends with. And you can't, you know, that whole, you only my friend. You, you that, that stuff. That's not cute. That's not cute. But, okay. But at least you're saying it. So we're seeing, no, you're not okay with the whole sweet teaism of it all. So that's it. That was a real interesting conversation over there to Phaedra's place. Let's go on over to Sweet Tea's place. Sweet tea, you over there up in Dr. Uh, G and Quad's old house looking a mess. A mess. That little jumper you had on. Did you not know they were filming? Let me tell you something, sweet tea. Come here, honey. Come on down front. They're filming. Which means at all times, you need to be camera ready. You need to be at your best. 
at all times. At all times. When you're on reality TV, everybody's looking at everything at all times. At all times. That's why I put this on. Because I know you're going to be sitting back somewhere if you ever see this to say, well, wait a minute. I put myself out there. I put all my business out there. Have I not given everything? And when you feel as though you've given everything, you are not the Black Panther's mother. So give some more. Because that is what is required when you do reality TV, my dear. You don't get on reality TV with that foolishness on. Girl, your cheese was spilling out. You not built. You not built. So they actually brought that. That came forward later on. And you actually have issues about your built. You not just got a, 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 you know, and you all right with it because you felt a kind of way when they said something about the way you shaped. But you not shaped for no unitard with no little shirt on and no titties and spilling out with no two little bra on. You're not that girl. And this is reality TV. So I'm just saying, do better. And when you feel that you've given all that you have to give, give some more. Give 10% more because people are going to tear you up. This is just how this thing works. Didn't make the rules. Just doing my job. Gregory. Gregory, Gregory, Gregory. Are we seeing the old Dr. G popping up? I paid, I paid, I paid, I paid. Well, what you think you're supposed to do? Didn't you bring this mail order broad up in there? Who you thought was going to pay, Gregory? Who you thought was going to pay? Isn't this how things went real left with Quad? When things got ugly, wasn't it a whole bunch of I paid for, I gave you, I did, I did, I did. You ain't learned nothing. You ain't learned nothing. Didn't we drag you about that before, Dr. G? And you know I like you. But did we not drag you at your exit about this I did, and this is what I did for you, and this is what I gave to you, and this is this? Didn't we drag you about that at your exit? And you making an entrance with this same bullshit? Dr. G, we will begin dragging you again. That is not a good look. I don't give a damn. You brought this mail order broad up on here. She jumped in your DMs and you put her on a plane. You finish how you started. You started by paying for her. Now finish paying for her. And shut up about it. I pay for, I pay for. I was appalled. You're supposed to pay, old man. You want a little young male order bride? That's how it works. Anyway. Now, then old girl over there. So yeah, y'all got on my nerves over at your house, Dr. G. Y'all did, uh, you know. Y'all, I'd have been one y'all to want to throw out because y'all, y'all done got on my nerves over there at y'all's house. I was ready to start pushing things off of the mantle and breaking shit. I <laughs> said, this is ridiculous. She over there talking about, I'm going to turn into a bridezilla. You're going to see a side, another side of me. Really? Don't get too stupid too quick because you know how he flew you in? He can fly you out, bitch. So you better just chill on out with that old smart shit. And then here's the other thing. All you did was tell us what we already know. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Dr. G, you can get out now. Just because you went down there and filed for that license, you can get out now. She just gave you the whole sign that it is too soon to actually be marrying her. Because anytime I tell you, I'm going to show you another side of me that you ain't seen. If I ain't seen all the sides of you, ain't no way you get no ring. What you going to show me? You ain't going to show me no thing while you got my ring. Because I shouldn't have gave you my ring before I seen all your things. It's too soon. It's too soon. So 
it tells me that right now with both of y'all, you and your I pay for, I pay for, if that's not the first time that you've been doing that, look like y'all been dating each other's representatives. Y'all know each other. Y'all know each other. You've been, don't you know we all do that? You date the representative at first. You don't date the real person. So somewhere down the line, you be dating the representative. And that's exactly what this whole scene showed me that y'all been dating the representatives. Moving right along. You got your license. It's time to get out now. As we go forth, it's going to be too late. You'll be stuck with your mail order Brad with her claws in you. And it looks like I ain't going to be feeling sorry for you, Dr. G, because it looks like all the red flags and the arrows are all be being put in place. And you acting like you got cataracts, but you got good glasses. I know you do because you can afford it. Moving along. The brat and Judy was over there with Dr. Jackie. The brat looks so cute. Look, face just as painted. I said, come on, brat. Listen, you better come in here and give us pregnancy beauty, honey. Just as pretty as she could be, honey, laying up there. And she is definitely, she's a high risk pregnancy because, you know, mostly her age. And I can't stand that. I hate. Ooh. Okay. It just is what it is. I mean, we have to talk about it. It is what it is. Everything is age, age, age. But it's a beautiful thing going on. She's having her first baby. She looks beautiful. Um, it was a good scene. It was just a good scene. Her and Judy just so happy. And then you got Dr. Jackie. And, uh, it, you know, and then Dr. Jackie, we actually got to see her lady that she brought on with her and everything's working out so because i thought about that so everything's working out with her and dr jack over the office so that was good to see um and just everything is just going their way they didn't want to know the sex of the baby um brat was doing really well fighting with what to eat and what not to eat brat was clowning until she don't went to wendy's but oh but i had them put a whole bunch of extra lettuce and tomatoes and stuff on Girl, you know that ain't nothing but an old nasty piece of number two days double with the cheese and girl. Shut on up. Try that number six, girl. Try that number six and add cheese to it. Bam. No, no. Listen, I got you, Brat. We here. But I was falling out laughing. Said that. Listen, Wendy's is a fat boy's dream. Don't play with me. Moving right along. God bless the Brat. Judy and the baby, honey. And you know, in real time, the baby is actually here and the baby's beautiful, doing wonderful, and the whole family is good. So God bless the Brad, Judy, and the baby. Moving on. Toya has, well, she was doing some things around wine. She like wine. But she's doing her own wine club. Um, and she she talked about that a little bit. She's playing a little event. Then they did this little sex education talk with the boys. Eh, nothing to see here much, really. You just get to see Toya's boys. And God, the more, the older they get, the more, well, the oldest one is starting to look like Eugene. But that baby boy looks just like Toya. Just like Toya. The baby boy acts like Toya. The oldest one acts more like Eugene. One for one. That's what they got. One for one. Um, good to see, always good to see, you know, Toya be getting on my nerves and said, listen, you know, I'll be calling them Grimace and the Fry Guy, honey, but the kids always love their kids. Their kids are sweet. Uh, their kids are good TV because they funny as hell. Um, so, you know, bless their kids that we like their kids. Anyway, them too, they get on my nerves, but not the kids. The kids is cool. Moving on. Um, oh, and Eugene, you should have had them cut that or something. Cause the he drink wine and the your lip, boy. You see that pink part inside my lip, girl. That you know that's get into it, honey. That's a, some old natural. Mm, that's mm. <laughs> but Eugene shit. I don't know what he got going on. It's stained. That's that red wine stained. It. I said. In that scene, when they kept flipping back, I said, if they don't stop flipping back to Eugene, would look like somebody bust him in his lip. Because that's what it looked like. It looked like he had a scar in his lip. But that wasn't nothing but the, the wine staining in the inside of his lip. Eugene, you need to cuss them out. Because that was a bad book. I'm like somebody had them punched you in your mouth. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Ew, it was just, that didn't look good. Moving on. 
Wedding gown shopping. So this is where they all got together, honey, and we got to see the sweet teas building. So sweet, honey. And the girls were speaking on it. And she's like, well, you know, I'm not from Atlanta where everybody got like these fake butts and this stuff. The other. I'm all natural. Okay. So they said to tell her, girl, you got to cinch your waist and this, that, that. I mean, it was girl talk. Now, I didn't think it was really all that bad. Now, Phaedra, Phaedra was being a little shady. Now, she was clean. So clean, oh, so clean. All drunk ass toy in there, knocking champagne. Who is in the bridal parlor knocking over champagne? All that white stuff in that glass. I said, oh, they're gonna put your black ass out of there, Annie. Anyway, <laughs> but Phaedra was doing what Phaedra. She was like, oh, girl, you ain't got no booty, you know. <laughs> That's Phaedra. But all of that is just girl talk. It's just girl talk. Then they were talking about this whole thing about this support group that she's in. I said, wait a minute. They called it an age gap support group from Facebook. And the one girl, she's sitting over there and, oh, yeah, you know, it's really for African-American women who date older men. And they were like, sugar babies. No, it's not the sugar. Sugar babies. Sugar babies. Yeah. Now, you can color it up, make it be nice. And if it was a woman, they'd be calling her a cougar. They'd be calling her a cougar. If she was dating somebody with that big gap in there, it's the same thing. When you're dating a person that's that much older than you, you're a sugar baby. That's it. That's all. That's all. You're going to go over there and be a kept woman, honey. That's all. Ain't no big deal. But you butt challenged. Ain't no thing. I didn't think it was really all that bad. I really didn't. And that was that. So we left that all that at the bridal parlor. I wasn't really crazy about none of the gowns, really, um, that they put on her. Just like, okay, girl, I mean, this is supposed to be some high-end bridal shop. It was giving me very David's bridal. But moving on, Toya's event. So we get down there. Now here come old girl with this horrible, that dress was horrible. <laughs> Listen, animal prints are hard. They always are. They're always hard. Um, it's very hard to pick an animal print and not come across costumey or come across tacky. Because animal prints are a lot, and I like, I, I do like some animal prints, but it's tricky. It is tricky. You got to be very careful, very careful. And I have some animal print in my male wardrobe, and I've definitely got some animal print in my female wardrobe. And trust me when I tell you on both ends, it is tricky because animal print can very easily come across costumey or like literally like just tacky. And you got you got to be careful with the colors and the and the the, the the fabric choice and the 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 accessory you got to be careful but this was a mess this was like some turned this was like a zebra turned upside down and hit his head on the curb it just that dress was horrible it didn't look good on sweet tea it was hugging you keep wearing these body con dresses and showing your body and showing your body that's all, I mean that's all that's to it is showing your body and you are in Atlanta and Atlanta is all about snatched waists and hips and booty that's Atlanta so if you're sitting around with a bunch of women and they're snatched and done and you sitting over here not snatched not done and got the tag on the damn dress. After you caused this whole commotion, she caused a whole commotion, said that they was mean. They have been mean to her. You know, whenever they came to her party, all that talk about quad, she thought all that was mean. And she thought all the girls was mean over at the, the what just made it all about her. Toya trying to get through her little spiel. Do you tell them about her little wine club and how to buy her wine and that? All about me. All about sweet tea, honey. So she's just, ah. I'm just done. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. Girl, nobody care if you're tired. Nobody give a damn about what you're talking about. Go on back over there to Quad's house and go sit with damn Dr. G. We don't care, girl. But they were just like, girl, you know what? You're right. We're sorry. 
We're sorry. She ended up going on. She got herself to where she was all emotional and she had to go. She, Simone took her. She's like, I'm stressed. And she's telling Simone, you know, I'm not getting supported at home. This, that thing, and the other one. This is all back to the fact that it's too soon. You don't need to marry Gregory, and Gregory definitely don't need to marry you. Anyway, so they did all that. Come on out, and everything's fine. She still just got her thing. But when they look, child, they went through the whole little thing. They get ready to leave, and she go to stand up. Because she, she's like, I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm ready to go. Bye. But they just all adjourned. Get up, she got the tag still on the back of the dress. Why Dr. Jack going to say, Lord have mercy. Y'all know the child was going to take. She just wanted to take the dress back, y'all. I said, oh, Dr. Jack. Dr. Jack! <laughs> you know you ain't supposed to say stuff like that, Dr. Jackie. But they laughed at her ass because she's stupid. Anyway, Heavenly told Toya, I'm really proud of you. Hugged her and told her, I want to support. Where do I go to buy that stuff? I said, no, that was nice. She turned right around and got in the confession. was going to say, that was nice coming from a hater. I said, why would you even invite her? If you feel like that, why would you even invite her? See, that's integrity on you. That's all on you. That's on your part. Because if you don't like a bitch, don't take their money. Don't invite them in. So she good. So I guess if it would have been a party where you wasn't selling something, you wouldn't have invited Heavenly. Huh? Just like you didn't invite Quad, you could have not invited Heavenly. See what I mean? This is why I call you the fry guy. You be doing that whole little conversation you had with Eugene when y'all was talking about, you know, these ladies, they probably going to hate on you. If you feel that way about any of them, you should have invited none of them. But that's just the truth. If you felt like they was going to hate on you, what do you, you want their money for? You don't need their money, do you? Do you? Do you, do you, do you? I'll wait. Moving on. Okay. So, Phaedra is still trying to figure out all of the quad drama. Like, whose fault is this? Whose fault is that? They talked about that a little bit. And it just came out to where nobody's been in communication. She ain't communicated with them. They haven't communicated with her. So Phaedra's like, try all y'all crazy. Right? They all crazy. They all crazy. They get along when they want to, not when they don't. That's all. It really ain't that deep. That's all. We've been doing this for 10 seasons. Or, well, that stuff for about seven. But, you know, whatever. Moving on. Last thing. Phaedra meets up with Gregory. And she sat there with him. And she, you know, said, we've been knowing each other for dang near 20 years. So they was able to actually talk. And listen, Phaedra was really dropping some good stuff on you, Gregory. But I don't know what part of it you weren't getting. Well, she said... Well, you got her. She dating Paul Paul. She's going to marry Paul Paul. I fell out. Fell out. Then you kept going on with this. Well, I feel safe with her. You know, I didn't feel safe with Quad. Why are you even still talking about Quad? That's been over. You didn't already engaged in with someone else and you're engaged to someone else. What happened with you and Quad shouldn't even come into the conversation anymore. It shouldn't even come into the conversation. Then when she said, do you have a prenup? And this fool told my, Dr. G, listen to Phaedra. Listen to Phaedra and get yourself a prenup. Because you're going to get your head banged on the curb. On the curb. I said, I really ain't got no more to say about it. Because that little conversation with them, it was a good conversation. It was funny. You know, but, you know, Phaedra's face, You Phaedra ain't here for sweet tea. She does not trust sweet tea. And I believe that is for good reason. I'm with Phaedra on this one. Dr. G, listen to Phaedra. Listen to Phaedra. And I, you know, I don't always go with what Phaedra be saying, but in this, listen to Phaedra. Because if you don't, 
your future is going to look like Listen to Phaedra. 